Question. What's the fastest car you can buy for a thousand pound? Could it be mm, an old Scooby, perhaps? Nah. No, you're not going to get one of those for a thousand pound. Ford Focus ST170? Nah, and uh, not even that fast. Um, uh, a large engined BMW or Mercedes or, or Audi? Mm, no, still don't think you're going to get anything like that for a thousand pound. No, I'll tell you the fastest car for a thousand pound. And it's this. That's right, folks, the Alpha 156. But not any old Alpha 156. No, sir. No, this needs to be the 2.4 JTD, the 20-valve multi-jet version. It's got 175 brake horsepower in a car that weighs about 1,400 kilos. Goes like stink. And if you don't believe me, watch this. Now I'm going to show you exactly why this particular Alpha is so good. I'm going to do a little 20 to 60 time. I'll come off the roundabout here. 20 miles an hour per minute. And... Necessitated a change to third, um, and you do get a little bit of turbo lag on this car, so one issue with it, uh, and that's kind of slowed the time down. So, the second one I did a, a 20 25 to 60 in third gear, which doesn't necessitate a gear change, probably has made it quicker. But we're going to check the times now. And Is why this car is so good because that was fast. So there you go, 20 ish to 60 in four and a half seconds. Uh, pretty fast, I think you'll agree. Now, if anyone's got a car they reckon can beat that for under a thousand, I'd like to know about it. In the meantime, if I've tickled your interest in buying one of these, uh, I'm gonna go and give you a few clues as to what you should look out for. Talk electrics, the nemesis of all Italian cars. But actually, the 156 is pretty good. Um, nothing much has gone wrong in here, and it has done 124,000 miles, so um, mm, not bad. Uh, that said, the cruise control is down here. It's something that uh, Fred Flintstone cobbled together with three wires and a yardstick. It's proper prehistoric. Um, don't know where he got the wires from. Sign of the times. So, wires rear, let's talk about the gearbox. This being the 20 valve version, it's got the six bead box, and that's a good and a bad thing. Um, the good thing, it's six beads. The bad thing is, it's not very durable. It's a bit, to be honest. The five speed that you get in the lower power 2.4s is much better, it goes forever. 
Um, this one not so, and after 124,000 miles, starting to get a bit baggy. Uh, quite a bit of drive line shunt in it. I'm going to replace it with a, a nice low mileage one I've got, but that's a video for another day. Ah, good of you to join me down here. Um, one of the main issues with the Alpha 156 is its love of its front suspension bushes. And when I say love of, I mean it likes to eat them for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And that's a problem because there are quite a few of them. Uh, and you'll know when she has been dining on them because they'll be making lots of bumps and clumping noises. Doesn't seem to bother MOT testers though for some reason. Anyway, uh, they're a right pain in the arse to fix, um, and don't go buying cheap ones off eBay like this, because I fitted one of these to an old uh, 156 of mine, and um, it failed after 50 miles. Anyway. Oh, forgot something. Forgot the drive shafts. She likes to eat those as well, uh, particularly this, the 20 valve version. Now, they're fairly cheap on the internet, there's a company called VR that do them. Uh, and like I said, they are cheap, uh, they probably will wear out after about 20,000 miles, but that will probably be longer than the car lasts. <laughs> Ignore that last comment, it's not true. 156s last at least three times as long as 159s. Now, you find me buying the number plate because I just want to tell you about uh, an issue if you're buying one, and that is uh, don't buy one that's got an S at the front of it. it. means it's lived its life in Scotland, and there are two reasons why that's a bad thing. First, the Scottish put lots of salt on their roads. Uh, that's bad for any Italian car or Japanese but we won't go into that now. Uh, and secondly, the Scots don't like spending much money. Something that's not compatible with Alfa Romeo ownership. I think Nicholas Sturgeon's going to want to have a word with me. And now we come to the heart of every Italian car, the engine. And here I give you five cylinders of Italian's finest engineering. 175 brake horsepower, 285 foot pound of torque. This engine is found throughout the Fiat Empire and it is frankly one of the best things to come out of Italy. And I include that alongside things like pizza and the ability for porn stars to become politicians. Cicchiolina, cicchiolina for Italia, Italia. Seriously, I stand by what I say though. This really is one of the best engines out there. It's totally unbustable. You can do 200,000 miles with it, no problems. There are very seldom any issues with them. Uh, this particular one chucks out 175 brake horsepower and with a prevailing wind, you can get 70 miles to the gallon out of it. They really are excellent. In fact, I reckon they should put these in Ferraris. Mm -hmm. Now, who buy one of them? Just one other thing. I've heard people say on the internet that if you want to change the timing belt, that you have to take the engine out. Now, it is pretty tight down there, but believe me, you don't have to take the engine out. It's actually surprisingly easy. I know, I did it a couple of weeks ago on this very car. Another thing to look out for when you're buying is that most uh, 156s were specified with the leather interiors. You definitely want to get one of those rather than a cloth one. It's so much nicer in here with the leather. So there you have it, my view of my 156. Uh, a stylish body, better mechanicals than it's given credit for. They're actually reasonably reliable, most of them. <laughs> 
Now everyone's going crazy for the GTA at the moment and price is about 10,000 which seems an awful lot to be honest to pay for a 156. Uh, for my money the 2.5 V6s are far better buy and if you're really clever like me you'll go for the diesel 20 valve version, oh yes. So I'd say it's time to wake up and smell the diesel. One final point, I did mention at the beginning of this video something about uh, uh, being the fastest car for a thousand pound. Well, just recently there's been a big dying off of 156s, a lot of them have gone to the big scrapyard in the sky. It does mean that it's only the good ones that are left out there, but it also means that their prices are on the up. So uh, if you want to get a fast car for a thousand pound, I'd be quick if I was you. Probably be a good investment too.